Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Today we'll talk about Clostridium botulinum characteristics. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridium tetany, which causes tetanus via tetanospasmin. But today it's about Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism via botulinum neurotoxin. Unlike tetanus, which he can develop by stepping on a rusty nail or cutting the stump of the umbilical cord with a kitchen knife contaminated with the spores, in order for you to develop botulism, however, you need to ingest meat from can that has been damaged because Clostridium botulinum is anaerobic and it can live in a tuna can for years and years and years hiding in a spore. Also, spores could be present in honey. You can develop botulism via wound contamination called wound botulism or via inhalation called inhalation botulism. And unlike tetanus which cleaves the snare proteins responsible for the release of GABA and glycine, botulinum toxin on the other hand will break down snares that are responsible for the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. And that's why with botulism you develop flaccid paralysis unlike the spastic paralysis caused by tetanus. So let's do it again. Clostridium tetany produces a toxin known as tetanospasmin. Spasmin because it's spastic. Why is it spastic? Because I'm inhibiting the release of the inhibitory neurotransmitter. Inhibition of inhibition is excitation. You get spasticity, spastic paralysis. But with Clostridium botulinum, which has the botulinum neurotoxin, it inhibits the acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction. No acetylcholine release, no muscle contraction, i.e. flaccid paralysis. Please watch the videos in this microbiology and infectious diseases playlist in order. Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive bacillus. Is it spore forming? Yes. Is it aerobic? No, it's anaerobic. Is it motile? Yes. Let's recap. Clostridium botulinum is a gram positive rod, spore forming, anaerobic, yet motile. Damage to cans and spores in the honey, wound infection or inhalation, gives you the botulinum toxin, which inhibits the release of acetylcholine by cleaving and breaking down the snare protein responsible for the release of acetylcholine. And that's why you get flaccid paralysis such as floppy baby syndrome. Is it a spore-forming bacterium? Yes, it is. Recall that spores could be formed by some gram-positive bacteria, never by gram-negatives. Spores, structure and function. Structure, do not forget calcium dipiclonic acid. Function, protection of the bacteria from unfavorable environmental conditions. The classic definition of Clostridia was discussed before. Gram-positive, strictly anaerobic, they can make spores, but they are unable to reduce sulfate to sulfite, and we talked about the problems with this definition before. Clostridia are all over the place all around you, ubiquitous in water, sewage, and soil. They are part of the normal flora of your gut, mostly harmless saprophytes, i.e. living on dead plants and dead cells. Why do they pose danger to human beings? Because they can make endospores, because they can make toxins, and because they can grow even when there is no oxygen. For the gazillion's time, Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive rod, spore-forming, anaerobic, yet motile. Clostridium botulinum releases a botulinum neurotoxin, which you can get exposed to via tuna, honey, wound infections, or inhalation. This botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, causing flaccid paralysis, such as ptosis, diplopia, descending flaccid paralysis, constipation, floppy baby syndrome, etc. Clostridium botulinum, gram-positive rod, spore-forming anaerobic yet motile, ubiquitous in soil, water, and sewage. We have four types of bacteria that produce the botulinum neurotoxin, the most famous of which is Clostridium botulinum. But botulinum toxin is not peculiar, not unique to Clostridium botulinum. In fact, we have other Clostridia that can release it, such as Clostridium butyricum, Clostridium barati, and Clostridium argentinense. What does the word Argentina mean? 
land of silver. Argenta means silver. The silver stain that is used in the lab can be also called the argentafin stain. The cells that take up the silver stain are referred to as argentafin cells. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Okay, medicosis, you told me that Cosidium botulinum is ubiquitous in the soil. Can you dig deeper? No pun intended. Sure. Type A strain is found in neutral or alkaline soils. Type B strain of Clostridium botulinum is in organic soil. Type C is in wet soil. Clostridium botulinum is anaerobic, spore-forming, and produces the famous heat-labile neurotoxin. It's good news that it's heat-labile. Why is that? Because if you are suspicious that your tuna can is kind of broken or dented or you just kind of feel like there's something going on here and you're afraid, you want to take good care of yourself and of your health, you do not want to develop botulism, what should you do? Simply cook the tuna. It will kill that nasty botulinum neurotoxin, causes very heat labile. The most potent toxin on the face of the earth cannot withstand your cooking pan. Why do you call it the most potent toxin? Because even a few nanograms can kill you. Just think about that. Wrap your head around this. I know that Gordon Ramsay wants it fresh and aromatic. F me. You still need to cook your tuna, unfortunately. Hey, big boy, listen. In my 30 plus years in the culinary industry, I've never heard so much arrogance. Wow. The toxin is released when the cell is lysed. Why is that? Because it's an exotoxin. It's an exotoxin. It's the classic AB toxin. A subunit and B subunit. The A subunit is small and light chain, but the B subunit is large, heavy chain. Both subunits are polypeptides bound together by a disulfide bond. They start as one unit, but proteases will cleave them into A subunit and B subunit. A is active, it has the enzyme activity, i.e. zinc metalloprotease, i.e. zinc endopeptidase, and the B subunit, which is for binding with your cell receptor. Let's elaborate. Botulinum neurotoxin is heat labile. It has seven subtypes, A through G. It's probably the most potent toxin ever. The A subunit is active. It's the, has the enzyme activity, zinc endopeptidase. A peptidase or a protease is an enzyme that breaks down proteins and peptides. The B is not going to kill you. The B will bind to your cell receptor and facilitate the entry of the A subunit to your neuron. This is what kills you. A active enzyme activity, but B is carbohydrate binding protein, binding with your cell receptors. The story of the botulinum neurotoxin. First, it's an AB toxin, we know that. Look at the B toxin and respect it. It has the COOH terminus, which is the C terminus, just like any polypeptide. And this binds to sialic acid receptor and glycoproteins not the same as the ones bound to by the tetanus toxin. They have the same names, but they are not identical. Different locks require different keys, according to the key and the lock theory. After it binds to your receptors on your neurons, it will be endocytosed via receptor-mediated endocytosis. And now you'll find it inside an endosome. The endosome becomes acidified thanks to the metabolism of your cells. A conformational change will happen and then the light chain will pass from the surface, from the cell membrane, into the depth of the cytosol of your cell. This light chain or A chain is active, enzyme activity, catalytic activity, zinc metalloprotease will break down your proteins. Be specific, your snare proteins. Be more specific, SNAP25, which is a member of the snare proteins. What's the function of the snare proteins? May they rest in peace. They used to release acetylcholine from the presynaptic neuron into the synaptic cleft and therefore onto the skeletal muscle at the nicotinic sub M receptor. But now this is not going to happen and you will decrease the release of acetylcholine and therefore you will develop flaccid paralysis with no contraction. We're talking constipation, we're talking ptosis, diplopia, floppy baby syndrome, 
etc. Just like tetanus, the binding of the botulinum toxin is irreversible. The only chance of recovery is if you regenerate and make brand new terminal axon knobs with brand new snare proteins. Recall that tetanus causes spastic paralysis by decreasing release of GABA, but botulism causes flaccid paralysis by decreasing release of acetylcholine. Both can kill you from diaphragmatic paralysis. Contrast botulism with Guillain-Barré. Botulism causes descending flaccid paralysis, but Guillain-Barré is ascending flaccid paralysis. Here is a wonderful comparison between tetanus toxin and botulinum toxin. You get tetanus toxin by stepping on a rusty nail. You get botulinum toxin by ingesting tuna or any canned meat or honey spores or wound infection or inhalation. Tetanus toxin is not bound to protective non-toxic proteins because tetanus toxin is not meant to be ingested. It does not need something to protect it from your gut proteases. But since you need to ingest botulinum toxin in order to get sick, the toxin needs to act in its own self-interest and protect itself from your gut proteases such as pepsin, trepsin, etc. Recall that these toxins are proteins. They are exotoxins. They are AB toxins. Speaking of A, it has the enzyme activity, but the B subunit binds your sciatic acid receptor and glycoproteins. Same thing with botulinum toxin, but they are not the identical sets of receptors. They are different. Different locks require different keys. Tetanus toxin does not remain at the neuromuscular junction. Botulinum toxin does remain there. Tetanus toxin inhibits the release of GABA and glycine, Botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine. If I inhibit the inhibitory, I am excitatory, spastic paralysis. But if I am inhibiting the acetylcholine, there is no muscle contraction, you'll get flaccid paralysis. What do you mean by spastic paralysis? I mean rhesus sardonica, strismus, and opisthotonus. What do you mean by flaccid paralysis? I mean ptosis diplopia, descending flaccid paralysis, constipation, floppy baby syndrome. Both of these toxins can kill you from diaphragmatic paralysis. Recall that the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. Clostridium botulinum releases botulinum neurotoxin, which causes a disease known as botulism. How many botulisms do we have? Four types of botulism. The classic is the foodborne botulism. We're talking about the canned food or canned meat. The infant botulism is the honey spores. This is the floppy baby syndrome. We also have wound botulism and inhalation botulism. We'll talk about the botulisms in the next video. Let's review Clostridium botulinum from Picmonic. Clostridium botulinum, here are the bottles in a classroom. Clostridium botulinum is a rod or a bacillus. Here is the rod. It's gram positive. Here is the angel. It's anaerobe. Here is the ant in a robe spore forming. Look at all of these spores. Heat labile neurotoxin. The toxin is damaged by heat. The toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine, a seagull cola, from the presynaptic neuron. Adults can develop botulism by eating canned food if the can was compromised. Children can get it via honey spores. It's called infant botulism. You can also get it by inhalation or wound infection. Symptoms include ptosis, here's the toast, diplopia or double vision, descending flaccid paralysis, floppy baby syndrome, and constipation. If you want to learn about antibiotics, I have a specific course about this. It comes with 40 videos that you can download to your computer today at medicosisperfectsnatus.com. I also have a neuropharmacology course on my website and a surgery high yields course, as well as an emergency medicine and toxicology high yields course. Learn about all kinds of poisonings. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.